I have been told there's a space mouse in here. I am so excited. Good morning. Today we are taking a look at a few different peripherals from a company called 3D Connection, but through the lens of a Mac user. I know I'm designing on a Mac, blasphemy. I got the opportunity to check out and test the Space Mouse Wireless, which is a 3D mouse, the CAD Mouse Wireless Compact, and then the Keyboard Pro and the Wireless Numpad. I'm gonna be sharing my experience testing these device, uh, devices specifically on a Mac and whether or not you should be considering this line of products if you also design on a Mac. All of these peripherals are aimed at people that design in CAD and CAD stands for Computer Aided Design and it's what allows designers to build 3D models on a computer in a virtual environment, which typically is a 2D type experience. So first, a, a little bit of context, so you're up to speed. I received these products back in June of 2024, and I did not officially start testing them in my setup until around like mid-July. Just had a backlog of content that I had to make. So from then on, the Space Mouse Wireless was constantly like in and out of rotation, and the keyboard and numpad barely got any use at all foreshadowing. And while I did try and use the mouse for like a month, uh, I eventually removed that from my setup as well. So spoiler alert, three of the four devices didn't work out so well for me. And the space mouse, while exceptionally dope, was really hard to get used to and is not as polished as an experience as it would be on Windows. So getting it to the point where I could test it well was pretty difficult. So let's just get right into it. Just kidding, disclaimer, all of the hardware shown in this video today was provided by 3D Connection for free in exchange for some sort of video content. Uh, I was actually the one that reached out to 3D Connection and offered to trade content for hardware. I was so excited to try all of this out. But with that said, no money changed hands. I don't get commission of any sales. 3D Connection couldn't suggest any talking points. Um, they don't get to preview this video before it's live. Uh, to be honest, they were so forgiving and flexible since day one. They are truly an awesome company to work with as a content creator, so bravo to them. With that said, let's talk about what went wrong first. Let's cover what I'm not going to cover, at least extensively. I originally planned for this video to be a deep dive into all of the different hardware that I got. While all you know that I'm extremely particular with keyboards and mice, I was still ready to daily drive all of these products, at least for like a month or two. Unfortunately, the keyboard, numpad, and mouse are just not fully compatible with Mac OS, at least Apple Silicon Mac OS. Getting them all to work together was a hassle. And when I first started having issues, I went online, looked around, and there is no shortage of Mac users having similar problems. The keyboard just does not work at all. You can't even get it to work just as a regular keyboard. So already that one is out of the picture. The numpad, more of the same. A lot of the base functionality just not working out of the box. I got a few minutes out of using it and then it got benched along with the keyboard. Now the CAD mouse, the CAD mouse compact was actually pretty awesome and I enjoyed using it, but it had a few fatal flaws. The mouse, along like the mouse being used with the mouse pad was the smoothest, silkiest mouse experience I've ever experienced. N like no contest. It was <laughs> crazy smooth. To make sure I wasn't crazy, I had the lady try it out as well. I'll try this one. What? <laughs> Doesn't that feel super weird? What? Like hyper smooth? What the heck? <laughs> Why is it so smooth? And I, isn't that crazy? And Why is it so smooth? I don't know. Put it back on that. What the heck? <laughs> Why is it so smooth? Easy to use. You know, it was compact, so it was smaller, but still comfortable. Tracked well, and I really loved the three-button design, especially for, for CAD design. However, you can't reprogram the mouse to have uh, to use the back and forward buttons for anything else. Uh, you can't reprogram the far right mouse button to do anything um, other than default. Uh, I would get random phantom scrolls even when I wasn't even using the mouse. It would be really glitchy in 3D design apps or slicer apps uh, like Shaper, Orca, uh, Fusion. Just 
really awful experience. The Bluetooth connectivity was awful, but I also kind of blame Mac OS for that. <laughs> Bluetooth on M1 Apple Silicon PCs is just awful. Everything Bluetooth sucks. And if you're using the wireless USB receiver instead of Bluetooth, left click just doesn't work at all. I thought I was going crazy. <laughs> so, so far out of those three devices, we are zero for three. And that leaves us with the Space Mouse Wireless, which had its fair share of issues, for the most part worked, but it wasn't great. <laughs> So this right here is this, this is the Space Mouse wi wireless. I'm a mess. This is the Space Mouse wireless. <sighs> Got sun chips, harvest cheddar all over it. Now a traditional mouse like this one is a 2D mouse. You move it up, down, left, right on a single flat plane. The mouse moves on your monitor, which is kind of that same flat plane, but vertical. A 3D mouse allows you to point, move, and manipulate objects in the 3D dimension. Third dimension. I could never be a scientist. So this is incredibly handy for people who are building models in 3D on the computer. So instead of just being able to move that mouse on that single flat plane, with a 3D mouse, you can... Pop it. <laughs> Push it. Pull it. Sorry. Wait. No, I'm not. You can zoom in, zoom out, tilt, roll, spin. In addition to all of those lovely controls, you also get buttons on the left and right side. Um, they open radio menus, which is like a simple four direction customizable menu. And uh, it changes based on what software you're currently focusing on. You actually get a lot of functionality out of this thing and you can customize so much of it radio menus macros hotkeys you know every direction every action every button press all set by you uh, you know either globally or by app and so that means i had a good time with it right over the past four months i've gone from loving it to hating it to tolerating it to getting frustrated to liking it and then ultimately removing it from my setup unfortunately First things first, installing the driver also forces you to enable a system extension, which isn't rare on Mac OS, but it's not exactly common. Out of all of the different hardware and software that I use and have tested, Space Mouse and the Elgato Wavelink software for the Stream Deck Plus are the only two that require system extensions. It's not necessarily an issue, but when you are troubleshooting things that aren't working correctly, Every uninstall and reinstall requires a reboot. And then you have to go into the settings and re-enable the system ex uh, extension, granting it permission. And then you have to go through the software again, set things up again. Once you're installed and ready to go, it's not as bad, but it's just when you're frustrated and you're troubleshooting and you're trying to get things working, it's just another thing that's kind of in your way and forces you to shut everything down. It adds to the frustration. So you get it installed, Hardware is working okay. And then you go and try and calibrate it. And the calibration button does nothing. And if you have a USB receiver plugged in and you want to launch the wireless device manager, you know, if you're using the mouse and the space mouse and the numpad, uh, you get an error that you can only have one USB receiver plugged in. And then when you remove the only receiver that you have, that button disappears and you can't access the menu at all. So once I finally got the space mouse to communicate and I eventually just started doing it over Bluetooth instead, I immediately jumped into Shaper 3D and then attempted to use it. And it was a little bit of a shit show from the start. Now, this is not because it is a bad product. It is because I had never had a 3D mouse before. And so using it and controlling it was just extremely foreign to me. But one of the things that I experienced um, was the camera always shifting away in one direction. And I thought that this was because I was dumb. And I'm still dumb, but this actually revealed another issue. More of that in a second. All of the videos that I watched mentioned that it was a good idea to go in and change default controls. Um, but I didn't even know what I wanted or what I liked. So I kept everything default for the first couple months just to make sure I was experiencing the device the way they wanted me to experience it first. One of the things that I never got used to is how sensitive this thing is and how it is pretty much impossible to move in one direction without also moving or altering another axis, excuse me. 
I couldn't zoom in without panning up or down, and I couldn't move left or right without tilting off axis. And then once you tilt off axis, you can't get back to controlling the camera in the CAD software like you normally would with a mouse. Like once you're tilted or adjusted off axis, you're fixed to that point until you reset it again. It's kind of a nightmare. And this goes back to what I mentioned a bit ago of it always drifting in one direction. After a full two days of like testing and troubleshooting and trying to figure out what was going on, I realized that my tilt back direction wasn't registering like it should. As a matter of fact, it was tilting forward when I was pulling back. I was like, okay, well, I probably needed to calibrate it. I can't. <laughs> now, I know what it's like to introduce new peripherals into your setup and to try and get used to something new. You know, it can be, it can create a lot of drag in your workflow and it can be really frustrating to try and like, you know what you need to do in the software or on the computer, but the new tool that you are you that you're using is causing it to take two, three or four times as long. When I first moved to a split columnar keyboard, which involved moving like shift, enter and alt to your thumbs instead of with your pinky, it took me a solid two months of using that keyboard 40 hours a week at work to get comfortable typing at the same speed again. But with typing, if I'm ever having an issue with accuracy or comfort, I can just slow down, think about what I'm doing, look down and type. There is no slowing down with a device like this. It feels like you were just given the N64 controller with the broken joystick, but nobody said anything because they want to be able to choose odd job faster than you. It's a terrible place to be put in. So after putting so much time into just trying to get it to work, I eventually reached out to support and I tried to get these issues sorted out. Before I did that, I went online to see if anybody was having these specific issues. I found a couple forum posts um, relating to upgrading the firmware of the Space Mouse Wireless. So I went from version 5.04 to 5.05, and unfortunately that didn't solve anything. I couldn't calibrate it. One of the directions still wasn't working. Uh, I couldn't launch the wireless device manager to see if there were any other settings that I needed to fix. And I'm a bedwetter. The last one support couldn't help with. So therefore, they are my enemy. <laughs> I worked with support through all of my issues, uh, which by the way, their support was fantastic. Even after receiving a replacement wireless receiver, my experience did not improve. Uh, they did confirm that the calibration button does not give any prompts on screen. They know that it's not a great experience, but they don't have an ETA on when that's gonna be fixed. The wireless device manager button disappearing when unplugged is by design. Again, they kind of agreed that it's not the greatest thing ever, uh, but that's just how they designed it. While I was able to plug this device into a Windows 11 machine, go through the calibration steps, that only seemed to fix my issue of the tilt back not registering for like a couple days. Eventually it went back to not registering again. And I'm, I'm unsure if this is again a Mac OS thing or if this is a hardware thing. I fully intended for this video to be a in-depth review of all of the hardware, but unfortunately for me, it turned into a lot of frustration trying to get basic functionality, and then even more of a nightmare trying to calibrate and customize these devices to work for me. With that said, do I think any of these are bad products? Not at all. Do I think me only designing things in CAD for about a year and a half, I've only got like 61 designs from scratch. Do I think that I have not yet reached a level where something like this is beneficial. Yes. Wait, what question did I ask? I I don't think I'm good enough for this yet, <laughs> is, is what I mean. Even when I had it working kind of and I was liking it, nothing was faster and more intuitive than just the mouse and keyboard. And, and it's somebody who uses so many different keyboard shortcuts and macros just in using the OS as a whole. Having my hand off of the keyboard just wasn't for me. Uh, it, it was a really tough time, and I'm usually pretty forgiving when it comes to adjustment periods, but this having this around was such an impact on more workflows than I bargained for, and that was tough. 
That was tough for me. There is a silver lining to this story. Uh, I offered to send all of this hardware back to 3D Connection. I wasn't even gonna make this video because I felt like I didn't have anything to offer, but I realized that my thing to offer was, hey, if there's any other people that are on Apple Silicon um, and they're looking to get into des some designing and they're looking at this hardware to maybe not jump ship quite yet or don't get on the ship yet. I don't know if the ship is technically sailed. <laughs> and it's not that I didn't wanna make a, a video that was talking negatively about the product. I don't feel like I did enough research on whether these products were good for people on Macs first. I should have done that. And I also, m my experience of testing this hardware on a Mac is not, a, it, it doesn't reflect the quality of the products because like I genuinely think all the products are great high quality products they just they weren't made for a person like me i always want to make sure that my videos paint an accurate and full picture and at, at first i didn't feel like i could do that um i also didn't want the hardware to go to waste and 3d connection actually said it was okay for me to give that hardware away to somebody else i already did the giveaway i apologize uh, no giveaway here today um so i'm shipping all of this hardware to a community member who won it in a giveaway and i'm sure they're gonna love it um but if you're looking to get this hardware and you yourself are on a mac as of now i would recommend against it but hopefully in the future that changes because i think the hardware is dope just not at this time good night